Hey everyone, Rob here from Rising Edge Industries, and in this video we're going to cover um, one of the features of the DR500 data recorder product family called um, DC offset control. Each channel has a configurable independent DC offset control to help control the DC sensor biasing, and um, we'll just show in a lab example of where that comes in handy and how you can prevent clipping and uh, get the most dynamic range from your signal response. So the first thing we'll do is just go over the test setup quick and we're doing uh, this test, we're just using our typical lab breadboard test setup um, shown here. And so today we've got two recorders bolted down, um, uh, one active one and then one we're not using. Um, our typical mechanical prototyping space. Um, and so this kit comes as a kit to complement the recorders that allow customers to bolt them down, secure them, and then um, extend the lifetime of the interface I.O. vias by using some of our breakout cards. So we've got a breakout card for each main header here, um, the production USB cable that comes with the recorder. Uh, the kit doesn't come with the recorder. It is separate and it contains the cable harnesses for all the I.O. that break them out to a customer um, interface board. It just makes interfacing for the recorders much easier and this is designed for uh, most common test equipment. You've got uh, SMA connections, uh, our termination cards for accelerometers, and uh, just terminals for um, manually wiring in sensors and other systems as well as multiple test points and then buttons for power enable and reset uh, or power enable and triggering and so this is just a handy kit it extends the life si lifetime of the vs2 where you, in a flight application you would solder your own cable assemblies into these via headers on the tongues but for lab use um, and non-flight use these are really convenient so they all just plug in and then you can unplug them when you're going to install this in a larger system or use it in a flight system. So it comes with an optical breadboard, allows everything to be bolted down um, with some hex bolts and standoffs and some carry handles. Uh, in, this, in this test we're just going to be using a signal generator, our lab signal gener generator to spoof a uh, differential sensor. It's going to be just two 180 degrees out of phase pulses, so inverting and non-inverting pulse inputs, and um, and, and we're going to showcase the ability to move the DC offset for these recorders up and down, so that um, if you do have a sensor that isn't um, doesn't have outputs that are very tightly matched, or you have a lot of overshoot or a lot of undershoot, you can move the DC offset component of each channel individually up and down over the whole range of the input channels to 033. And so we will then get started with our lab test here. Um, change my screen, cast over to my desktop. There we go. Okay. And um, so we'll also be using our little alpha data analysis tool. It is released. Um, this is still under alpha development. Um, so the first thing you want to do is launch and configure the recorder. So we'll launch our configuration tool application and Make sure I have the right desktop enabled. Ah, there we go. Okay. And so now we can see our recorder tool. We'll open our connection, serial number 22. There's two plugged in, um, and we're using serial number 22. Get our current configuration, and we'll start the test off with uh, no gain. And we're just using channel 1, so the configuration is pretty simple, and we'll just record for 60 milliseconds. And so do uh, erase, reset the sector erase uh, in the erase menu just allows you to erase a portion of the post trigger memory. We're doing two sectors, which is one meg. 
as opposed to erasing the whole thing, which can take a little while since it's a gigabit memory space. And the test setup is going to consist of two out of phase pulses. And there's a screen capture from the oscilloscope that we can bring up. And so these are the inputs. They're two 20 millivolt, roughly 20 millivolt pulses out of our signal generator. Um, so uh, non-inverting is orange and inverting is the, is the uh, blue channel bring four. Our output is a little hard to see because there's no gain and this is um, DC coupled so um, our scale is a little off but you can see the pulse shape here just slightly and you can see our DC offset starting out is a little above two volts and that's pretty high and uh, that's the main reason we designed in the, the ability to control the offset to the degree that we did so we could support a much wider variety of sensors and inputs um, and so there so that's the that's the standard input signal that we have to start off the test with and so we'll do a quick data acquisition cycle here um, once you press set config it takes all of these interface options on the software application loads them into the recorder and so we're, it's a pretty simple test, um, default 60 meg millisecond time duration, no trigger delay, no oversampling, um, all the gains are one, and we're just running in one shot mode. There's two operating modes, and you can check our website, we have some applications, application notes for each run mode, and then some options up here we'll get into a little bit further. But for now, we'll just use the USB command trigger start start the recorder, download the data file, I have our progress gauge here, and we'll load our, our in-house analysis tool and look at our data file, 19, uh, yeah, 19. And so we can see we've got a very small input signal and this Let's see if shrink this a little bit so okay so you can see the pulse shape it's pretty small and the signal generator is kind of at its maximum here it's a little jumpy but we can take a measurement with our cursors and measure about flat spot here so we can see our, our tool has the cursor marks and then uh, delta Y is um, cursor 2, the magnitude here with the green dot minus cursor 1, which is the red dot. So it gives us the pulse magnitude, which is about 42.28 millivolts. And one thing to note in this example is that these recorders come calibrated uh, with a calibration value for a gain of 1. So in the configuration here, each channel will have a calibration value for 1 because it's not exactly 1. It's a little bit above 1.0. And in this case, our cal value during production is 1.05. And so if we take the delta of 42.28 and divide that by 1.05, we get roughly 40 millivolts, a little bit over. Um, but we're pretty much right on the money with this signal generator and our input stimulus and so this pulse is still quite small but it matches this right here which is the analog signal going into our A to D from this differential input pulse here and these are two very different scales 20 millivolt scales versus half a volt scale so so that's our input test signal and our first data acquisition run. So next we're going to induce what we could see in some sensors where they would be clipping. So if you have a high offset with a sensor, um, which is usually driven by the inputs being mismatched. So if you have a accelerometer with a resistive bridge type configuration and one output is one, they're usually biased to half of VCC and if one output is 
one point at um, say six and the other output is 1.8 you have a 200 millivolt offset differential and that comes out as a DC offset at steady state in the data result and this is pretty common and the issue is um, because this is a fully DC capable device there's no AC coupling going on which is great in the respect you get a maximum amount of information and at DC that can be helpful in some cases especially if the device is used to measure trigger signals and power supply information rather than just sensors um, but that offset also manifests as an error that gets amplified when uh, customers use a gain. The gain can go up to 100, um, but even if you use a gain of 10 with a 200 millivolt offset error, you know, that's multiplied by 10 and now you're left with a 2 volt offset error. So what we do is we've got a interactive interface that we'll do um, in the last test run to show you how to fix this issue with our device and the technology we've developed to support um, preventing this from limiting customers and also allowing customers to use the full dynamic range when you have a sensor that's um, that's um, either either unique um, or custom designed for a specific use case where it has a really high overshoot or a really high undershoot you can take advantage of um, the asymmetry in some sensors with this DC offset control and we'll point that out shortly. Um, for now what we'll do is we'll next add the offset uh, or we'll add a gain term to this so that and this just shows our input pulse AC coupled so actually let's see here so yeah so this is our waveform so this is our waveform where channel 1 here is DC coupled to show the DC offset channel uh, this is AC coupled to show the pulse magnitude is about 42 we got about 42.28 this is with cursors is just a rough estimate 42.33 um, we're gonna apply the gain and we're gonna apply a gain of 20 and what we're gonna see because we have such a high offset to begin with we're gonna saturate the channel okay so now we're gonna set our gain of 20 here and set configuration get configuration we now have it updated to 20 all the default settings settings stay the same um, and we're running at 500 K samples per second on channel 1 for a duration of 60 milliseconds we'll erase two sectors which is a meg which is plenty um, for this duration the sector the customer control how many sectors to erase because the post trigger memory is so big it takes a while to erase the whole thing so this is customer controlled and it's a function of the run duration how many samples you have going into memory determine how much memory you should erase each time um, the, the pre-trigger memory doesn't need to be erased ever it's managed by the device um, the post trigger memory does need to be erased every run by the user and the uh, the, the engine in the device also the, the digital data acquisition engine also needs to be reset so the process is set your configuration through the UI set configuration get configuration to check it then erase and reset and you're ready to trigger again for both operating modes it's the same so post trigger memory does have to be managed a little bit by the user um, but now we've got our recorder configured um, our gain set this is applied through the analog front end so gain and DC offset are controlled digitally um, but they are implemented in the uh, analog signal chain in the analog front end uh, hardware so now we'll do a uh, start a USB trigger command download the data file and we will check our data file and plot which is 22 so you can see here um, we've got full channel saturation so we applied a gain of 20 the channel is offset already um, pretty high and 
this gain of 20 saturated the channel so we can't get any information and so now we'll show one of the features in this instrument that allows customers to fix this problem and take advantage of uh, larger dynamic range with a multitude of sensors so the DR500 family has the option to open a somewhat real-time offset control interface called the offset cal heads up display and it looks like this so this UI um, is receiving data samples at a couple hertz so pretty small but it's in, the intent is just to control the DC component and all the channels have their own control per tab one two three and four and they're all independently controlled so um, we control them through uh, through an ADC code which maps to a voltage you can set voltage and type in a voltage here or you can use the ADC code there's a little control loop in firmware that um, closes or locks on to customer specified voltage but the samples are easier so we've, we've got both for customers um, and so you can see in this UI that um, we can see we're, we're saturated at our max value of 4095 or 3.3 volts so we're going to walk that down um, quite a bit since our offset was so high. And there we go. So now we've walked the DC offset down substantially, which gives us a lot more headroom in our dynamic range here for channel one. And you can do this um, per ADC code. You can walk it down quite a bit. It's pretty high resolution, so 15. And so customers can do this. Now we do have the signals being driven from our signal generator. I haven't turned those off, so there, there is noise on here because of that. Um, this very much undersampled, but we're going to do the next data run with a uh, DC offset of 1400, which equates to about a volt. Um, and so we'll close this window and reset the recorder erase the memory and we will start another data run using the USB trigger start download the data file and we will check out the data file in our in-house lab tool and so this is a data file so now instead of being totally saturated you can see our offset is roughly around the one volt um, setting it maps one to one but we didn't check in too much detail when we were in the offset control HUD um, but yeah we see our pulse shape we can take a measurement here channel cursor 2 and uh, we've roughly got a magnitude of about 812 millivolts which looks about right 40 millivolts times gain of 20 and our pulse duration we can also measure um, let's do 50 50 our pulse duration is pretty quick and so we've got our delta x for pulse duration here and we've got our delta y for magnitude here and then the cursor 1 and 2 information as well so that looks good we fixed the saturation issue and we can also do a quick test run this offset cal to show some clipping which is also common if we do a 425 maybe and move that up maybe 35 We'll, we'll walk the DC offset for channel 1 up. This will probably induce clipping. Well, let's make sure. Okay. Um, and one thing to note with customers here, you can imagine if you have a sensor with a large overshoot and you don't have this DC offset control, um, you lose a lot of your dynamic range and that's customers losing a lot of value. So the technology in this instrument allows you to 
lock this offset down to if, as low as you know, 250. Well, not with a gain, but uh, let's see. 1300. And yeah, so you can see we're, we're just above DC here. Um, but if you want to measure a large over, overshoot, this instrument um, and family of instruments allows customers to acquire data from fairly asymmetric sensors that have either very, very large overshoots here. You could see there's a large overshoot, or you can walk it up pretty high. And this might be, yeah. So if there was a very large undershoot in a sensor um, or other electrical system, um, these can acquire data from other third party or customer developed electronics as well. So the freedom here really adds a lot of value. Um, and we're, you know, our goal is to allow customers to get more out of the product they pay for. So let's do a data run to see if we can find any clipping. This should clip pretty bad at a gain of 20 with this input signal. So reset and grab our next data file. We will save the folder, 24, um, no, not quite yet, okay, so we'll move that up a little bit more, okay, so let's do 65, 85 just to make sure, there we go, okay, so that should be I should, that should definitely show some serious clipping. Reset, start, download, and we'll check the data file. Should be data file 25, and not quite. All right, let's try it one more time. Set control. Reset the engine, erase the post trigger memory space, start a data acquisition run, download the data file, and we'll inspect it. Should show our clipping. There we go. Okay. So you can see we've hit our 3.33 sensor biasing. You can see we're clearly clipping just from just from looking at the plot you can see that we're clearly clipping um, but we'll do a quick measurement of this is channel 2 minus channel 1 or cursor 2 minus cursor 1 yeah you can see we're missing 300 millivolts so this is pretty common um, especially when working with either more exotic asymmetric sensors or custom third party uh, electronic systems that you're trying to synchronize to a sensor. For example, shock electronics on channel one, or shock um, accelerometer on channel one, and then channel two, three, and four may be connected to customer hardware that's under development. Um, and so in this case, you would be losing about 300 millivolts of information. So this would render the data acquisition run useless. And so to fix this, all the user has to do is launch the offset, DC offset calibration HUD, um, check the status of the input channel live, and walk this down. Walk this down to the desired DC offset level which could even be lower than this um, to give us plenty of headroom. So we'll go with that. And 
Then the only next step is to just rearm the recorder so it's ready for another acquisition run, erase the memory, and send a trigger signal or command and download the data file. And from here we can go check it. Data file 27. And we can see we're right down approaching zero. So you really get a uh, full range in this uh, in this product line. Um, and we're at 0.9, so there's plenty of headroom. So if you, you had a sensor in this situation that had a lot of overshoot and very little undershoot, you can shift this waveform down and uh, maximize the value in the instrument to the customer by uh, maximizing the dynamic range. And so that's that's pretty much it for this test. Um, to sum it up, if you are familiar with our UIs or the product, check out our website and application notes, data sheet are all up there. Our YouTube channel has much more in-depth tutorials and lab examples, quick take videos of what functionality the products have, um, how they work, and some use cases. And I think that's pretty much it. I don't think we have or some other scope shots. Um, so this is just the result of this is a screen capture right at the A to D of a lab unit we modified to show the saturation here, which we saw in the data file, um, and then to fix that once we walked the DC offset down for channel one, you could see you get your your DC offset down to one volt um, with your 800 millivolt pulse with the gain of 400 millivolts with, with a gain of 20. So your 800 millivolt pulse here, um, and you have plenty of headroom. Um, so the customer has you know much more dynamic range as well as this being able, you know, being able to walk this down further. So it's really all of this sums up to a focus on allowing customers to maximize the dynamic range of each input channel individually to get the most value out of this uh, product family. And um, you know, use our software interface to control the unit. All of the controls, um, in this case, were specifically DC offset and gain are implemented in analog hardware. Um, they're controlled digitally. And uh, this is the UI, and it was done on our breadboard platform that's here to support customers um, in a non flight settings. It saves a lot of time, it increases the lifespan of the solder vias on these headers here. You can see these cards just plug right in and unplug. Um, we've got very low cost cable harnesses. That, um, that interface into our I.O. board here that is designed specifically both to interface two sensors with some termination cards that plug and unplug as well as um, standard test equipment, pro points, and then buttons for discrete interaction to some of the discrete I.O. on the unit. And then the commercial cable that does come with the recorder. Um, the recorder comes with a cable, a USB cable. And the breadboard kit includes all the hardware seen here, minus the recorders and the USB cable, the um, the mechanical uh, fixturing and components, bolts, um, tie-down bars for the recorders to keep them from moving, be carried around with carry handles, uh, heavy-duty anodized optical breadboard standoffs, and all the interfacing. Um, this allows you to bolt down multiple recorders as well as some prototype um, area here for any third-party um, customer hardware that makes sense to be bolted down along with the electronics we support for interfacing or for the products themselves. So that is it for our demonstration. And uh, thank you for watching. For any more information, please reach out to us or check out our website for application notes and our YouTube channel for more video content and live demonstrations. Thanks.